for some reason. Can you hear the music, folks? There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> There's always something that goes wrong when we go live, isn't there? <sighs> Well, Hello, welcome to Leaders people. Live, everybody. Short countdown timer to help the various live feeds catch up and settle down, etc. And, um, yeah, we can't wait for today's groovy show. I'm just getting the feed lined up as I'll be talking. Just waiting for the feed to come through. I'll be through in a minute. So we're hanging out with founder of Drawn to Learn, my mate, Jackie Forbes, and we'll be chatting about how learning to draw benefits your business. Uh, that deserves a ooh, ooh. And uh, yeah, hi Jackie, how are you doing? If you can uh, give us a wave yes. and a quick hello. Good morning everybody. Uh, and just a, a, a quick request. If you're sitting at a desk or anywhere where you can grab a pen and paper, let's do that because I challenge you to draw out some visual minutes of the conversation that takes place today. Brilliant. And I'll tell you in a minute why. Fantastic, thank you. Right, okay, so there's your challenge, folks. Pen and paper at the ready, please. Jonas, good morning from Denmark. Fantastic to see you. So, uh, yeah, and helping us to engage this morning, we have the lovely Birdie Hugo, our fab moderator, whoop, 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 chipping in, and she'll be keeping the interaction flowing. We'll say hello to Birdie in a minute. So, uh, music was by my Uncle Peter, by the way. So, uh, yeah. 48th Leaders Live show. Woo, fantastic. And we, <laughs> thanks, Jackie. And we've all been part of this growing, growing this community, and it feels really exciting, um, certainly from my perspective. And uh, we've got lots of people online at the moment so uh, for those of you who just joined if you want to grab a pen and paper um, you'll be joining in too and interacting with us with pen and paper we'll tell you all about that in a little while and uh, please let us know if our audio is coming through okay I think it probably is so uh, morning uh, Matthias morning Jonas morning Jack Wright Jack's coming on the show in a bit we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment morning Paul fantastic okay so oi oi people it's leaders live showtime folks and it's 8 45 a.m here in the UK and we are live, live, live with Leaders Live. We're spreading the love, folks. We're spreading the love. Yabba dabba do. And we're streaming out on LinkedIn. We're streaming on YouTube, Facebook, a Facebook group or two, Twitter. And we think we've kind of um, streaming out on Twitch. We haven't worked out Twitch, really. It's a weird one, Twitch. So, But ta-da, there we are. It all hangs together somehow. And uh, uh, if you can't catch us on live or on the replay so there'll be a replay directly after this fear not my friends we have you covered because this will go out on podcast too in the next 48 hours so uh, morning thomas king great to see you from south africa brilliant and uh, remember too it's an interactive show folks so please get involved join in ask questions network with the live community and even a little bit of friendly banter goes a long way as well. So for those of you that are new to the show, um, you'll figure it out as we go along. It is very interactive. Um, Jackie's asked us to get pen and paper this morning so you can all join in with the drawing fun today. Yeah, so, so we've got that to come. And uh, remember, we've got merch too, folks. So we've got new T-shirts and hoodies. And uh, we've now got a Creative Wear website up and running so you can order those directly if you want to. They're available in white and dusty pink for male and female fitted versions. Ooh, what's not to like about that, eh? I think that deserves a... <laughs> okay, so put it all together and what have you got? Yep, you've got it. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. And also brand new, we're experimenting with a new five minute interlude slot in the middle of this show uh, on the Leaders Live again this week, folks, called Get to Know You in Five, where we briefly feature a regular on the show. Uh, in just a five minute slot so we can all get to know each other over the weeks that proceed. So uh, yeah, wow. wow. <laughs> and today's show, we are showcasing Leaders Live regular contributor Jack Wright and he'll be joining us about half time folks. So uh, we'll come back to that again in a little while, just so you know. So let's bring up this week's Leaders Live guest today. I'm hanging out, as I said, with former co-owner and MD of Emerge Development Consultancy. I actually gave my first break in 2004, years ago. We were just talking about that beforehand. And now founder of Drawn to Learn, my mate, Jackie Forbes. <laughs> and we'll be chatting about Drawn to Perform, the art of using hand-drawn doodles and templates to enrich conversations, drive business performance and drive your own personal performance as well. How are you doing, Jackie? <laughs> Hello, good morning. Uh, Queer Mora, which I think is good morning in South African, if oh, I remember nice. rightly. Um, yeah, I'm doing great and it's a real pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. 
Brilliant. Uh, I think we've got a really interesting topic this week. Um, and, you know, after all, isn't business creativity, creativity the new business sexy? Don't they say that? <laughs> so well, that's what we're kind of talking about today. So, Jackie, you know, talk us through what you're doing with us today. Give us a little bit of a taste of where we're heading today. OK, so we're, we're looking at why hand drawings are mm. really powerful in business um, and how they engage people and mobilise them around um, conversations, remembering them and implementing, you know, vision, mission, strategy and that sort of thing. So I'll be talking to you about that as we go through. Right. Um, but I have encouraged you to yeah. grab a pen and paper if you can, yep. because my first challenge to you in this um, talk is to sketch note or take visual minutes. Now, if you can draw a square, a triangle, a line, a stick man, <laughs> a speech bubble, you can do this. Yeah. Uh, and why would you? So the power of actually personally doodling on drawing out what you're hearing brings you right into the moment. It mm -hmm. uh, cuts out all other distractions. And just to give you some interesting statistics around this, 90% of the information that the brain um, receives and processes is actually visual. 65% mm. of the population are visual learners. Wow. So the very act of, you know, you're seeing a talk this morning, you're mm. hearing a talk this morning, as you draw, you process, you synthesize, you're really feeling the talk that we're having this morning. And because you're touching all of those senses, you're more than likely to remember your retention <clears throat> after two weeks is going to be at least 50% wow. uh, of the content of the drawing. So give it a go. There's no rights, no wrongs. Um, it's about pretty letters, arrows, connections, and things like that. Um, and I think um, this should be a talk that will really stick with you. Yeah, and you can put them in the chat too. You can, P you can uh, JPEG them and we can see them as we're going or see them at the end. That'll be brilliant. So uh, there's your challenge for today, folks. And you've got um, a question for us as well, haven't you, Jackie, to kick us off with some interaction? Yes, yes. Um, so I suppose the question is... Um... <laughs> <laughs> trying to remember. Don't worry. I've okay. got the question if you want to. Yes, would you mind? Sorry. No, Sorry not at all. That. That's okay. So are you a doodler, folks, in meetings? And if you are a doodler, why do you do that? So thank you, Andrew. Please, yeah. please pop that into the feed for us. Get the interaction starting. So um, question from Jackie was, are you a doodler in meetings? And why do you do that? So let's um, yeah. let's kick that off. Birding's just put it into the chat as well. Um, so we'll uh, we'll come to uh, we'll come to those in a moment. So slight delay in the feed. So as as that's catching up with us, we'll we'll pick that up in a little while. So. Um, we'll come back to that in a moment and uh, mm -hmm. we'll start using the comments to please use the comments to start to respond to Jackie's questions people and we'll come back to you too in a moment just to tick Jackie so um, as mentioned uh uh, as mentioned earlier, you know, Leaders Live is an interactive show, so please join in. Don't be shy. Use the comments for these questions and engage with us during the show and with each other. And remember, it's a group conversation, folks. You know how it goes. And during the countdown, I briefly introduced Birdin, our fantastic moderator. And uh, here's a chance to say to say something, Birdin. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks, Andrew. I'm a bit out of my comfort zone this week. I've moved to a different area. So a bit out of that. So if you guys see some dogs hopping around, it's <laughs> fine. They, they're joining in on the chat today. <laughs> yeah, Birdin's house-sitting, so uh, that's brilliant. So, uh, yeah, and um, and dogs as well. So there we go. Thanks, Birdin. We'll, we'll keep coming back to you, Birdin. She'll keep us on the straight and narrow for the interaction, so we'll keep coming through to Birdin from time to time. So... Um, Smash those likes too, folks, and the thumbs up as we're going along. We'd really appreciate that. That just keeps us motivated, keeps us going as we are going through the show, please. So, and also, please subscribe to the Leaders Live YouTube community channel. Uh, it's a group effort, and uh, this will help us to grow from a fledgling to get its own wings. Now, we're very small numbers on YouTube. It takes ages to grow a YouTube channel, so we're about 84 people at the moment. We're trying to get to that 100, that magic number. I know it doesn't sound a lot, but that's just our first milestone, and then we'll grow from there. So please um, join on, on the YouTube channel for us. So... 
back to Jackie again. Let me just uh, bring Jackie up again. So, and, ah, uh, yeah. So, feel the love, Jackie, and let's just give you a round of applause while we're doing that. So, uh, you'll be clearing this up for ages, Jackie. <laughs> for those of you on podcast, we've just, um, we've, we've just sent a whole load of confetti on Jackie's way. So, I hope you love the build-up, Jackie, and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. So, Jackie, you asked the audience a question. Let's start with this. Birding, what are the comments that are coming through from the folks that are listening in um, to the doodling question? Uh, we've got Laurie Hale. She said, yes, she's a doodler and have gotten in trouble for it in my youth for not paying attention, which is something we can all resonate with, <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, great. We'll come back to that comment in a moment. Yeah. What, what else, Birdin? Joe said, I'm a doodler. I've never really thought why I do it. I doodle lots when I'm on the phone. Oh, yeah. Um, well done. Morning, Joe. Uh, jo. Matthias said, not a doodler yet. Hope I will be after today's session. Yeah, Matthias. That's yeah. brilliant. I like that. Yeah, there you go. There's a challenge for you, Matthias. Cecile said, I was bored if I remember well, and it was a way to remain focused. Uh, um, yeah. Then I can't see this name, but I'll check now. Be after refreshing rose. on. Yeah. You know, doodle when a bit bored or distracted. Mm. Okay. And yeah, Cecile sure said, other than is. work, other than work, I love to doodle. Yeah. Uh, Jonah said, well, I am, but it might be more sign or bored of boredom. Mm -hmm. If the speaker is not that interesting, I hope mm -hmm. to learn how to use it in a more useful yeah. way. Ah, okay, the, these are such good comments. So they first, uh, yeah. the doodler at school. What a shame um, that um, our teachers and facilitators don't realise the power of drawing out conversations. Now, yeah. as a professional doodler at school, I did Christmas trees and eyes. <laughs> and I guess you've got your favorite things that you always doodle. Yeah. But the thing is, if you can harness that mm -hmm. and actually tune into what's being said, synthesize it and find a way of representing it, um, in, through your doodle or mind map. Mind maps are a great place to start with this. Yeah. Then basically it's giving you a hundred percent focus. So I would encourage you to stay with the doodling habit, but do it with a purpose now. And if you've never doodled before, how about a little bit of experimenting and you know, even just starting with clustering your words by putting the topic of the conversation in the middle of the page and drawing out branches uh, as in a mind map, as, in a mind but map. as the conversation unfolds. And mind maps are interesting because mind maps almost mirror neural pathways. Oh, um, and I point. find my recall, so if I take notes in a mind map versus a, a list, my recall is so much better of where things are placed and the groupings. Um, so I heartily encourage you to take up that habit and to bring it out again. And um, it is right, people, my teacher used to think I wasn't listening, but um, I was even if I was doodling. Because the other thing is, if you keep the motor going and you really calm yourself into doodling, it's quite therapeutic and it yeah. does make your brain quite receptive to Doesn't what it? you're hearing. Yeah, and there's probably some integration going on between left and right brain as well, perhaps, yes, Jackie. Yes. There are lots of things going on. Wow. Okay. Bertine, back to you. Give us what else is going on in the comments. I can see there's loads going on. Let's. Uh, yeah, let's... so first of all, the LinkedIn user was David Newman. Oh, so welcome, David. David. How are you doing, David? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Graham just mentioned that he hopes I retain a power supply. Graham, load shedding has been suspended for now. Yay! What, just <laughs> for waiting. today's show? <laughs> yes, welcome to South Africa. Welcome to South Africa. Um, yeah. Maria said, I used to doodle a lot when I was younger in school and when I used to be on the phone chatting, but no... Now I'm not anymore. Maybe oh. I need to reintroduce. Definitely. Absolutely, Maria. Yeah, get that going. Well, you've got a chance to practice today, so I hope you're doodling away as we're talking. Yes. So, uh, Thomas said, "I was always, I was always get so jealous of the creative doodles people create. Yeah, I've yeah. always fantasized about a doodle style tattoo. 
Oh, Thomas, there you go. There's a challenge, yeah. You want me to rub may, that out, though, mate? <laughs> may I jump in there? Yeah, jump because, in, please. Because um, yeah. people can feel mm. quite intimidated mm. uh, by the beauty and quality of other people's doodles or mm. large-scale drawings because there's something very personal about um, the mark-making that we, that we do. And what I would say is it's never about how beautiful something is in yeah. this field. It's about how meaningful it is. And if those drawings that you do, those doodles are meaningful to you, then that's absolutely fine. Some of the, some of the leaders in our field um, are not, you know, presenting themselves as the most beautiful artists, um, artistic work. So, um, some of them don't even use drawings, they use fabulous lettering. Um, and uh, you remember because of how they connect them and the colors that they use and the groupings that they use. So I think it's a bit like singing in public. It's something to just get over, get over yourself and do it for yourself. And even if you're doing it uh, to facilitate group thinking, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, please don't be intimidated because it's the representation of conversations that's the real key to this, yeah. not the prettiness of your drawing. Absolutely. So it's meaning over beauty, yeah. isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Lovely. Okay, got that. Birdie, back to you again. Uh, Kev said, I doodle because I can never read my own notes after <laughs> a meeting due to my terrible spider handwriting. <laughs> oh, Kev, Kev, yeah, yeah, me and you, mate. Yeah, I get that one, yeah. <laughs> oh, and Laurie just agreed with that. Yeah. Laurie said, Odd, what you are describing is not doodling to me. That is how I take notes. There you go. Good. Yeah, Good. spot on, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Andrew Bryan said, Good morning, everyone. I'm always doodling when things get a bit bored. They really do come in handy at times. Okay, so for all you doodlers out there, um, <laughs> if you want to start to bring a bit more meaning to your doodling and maybe get some top tips on how to do it, here is an amazing book called The wow. Sketch Note Workbook by Mike Rhodes. Uh, this is uh, the Bible for us sketch noters. Um, and it's got so many brilliant tips uh, on layout and um, just how to go about it. So uh, I encourage you to, to read that um, if, for your own personal uh, sketch noting, doodling, whatever you want to call it. But try and bring a bit more purpose to it. So just, just so that we, we'll get the link a little bit later. But yeah. what was the title again and the author? So it's called The it Sketch Noters, sorry, The Sketch Note Workbook. Sketch and it's by Mike Rode. Mike Road. Okay, fine. Thank you for that. So, Birdin, I don't know whether that we can find that link or, or we do it a bit later or we do it in time. I don't know, but that would be great. So, uh, just while Birdin's finding that, Jack Wright says, I prefer doodle explainer videos or reading text or listening to someone okay. speak. I'd love to pick up on that, uh, mm, Jack. Please. That's such a great point. Point. So one of uh, our heroes in the field of graphic facilitation, and I'll tell you what graphic facilitation is in a bit more detail in a minute, is Dan Rome. Uh, and he's a, the author of many uh, amazing books, including Back of a Serviette. Now, he <laughs> took the American Health Bill, 1,000 pages, uh, sat down with a lawyer uh, for several days and managed to distill the 1,000-page complex health bill into seven drawings wow. simple drawings imagine yeah. that and uh fox news got wind of that and actually invited Yvonne to to talk about it because the health bill was something people would say oh we don't agree with it we don't agree with it but who's actually read it uh, and once you uh, could see it uh, the complexity made simple which is the beauty of what we do um people could really get their heads around it uh, there you go, Jack. There's a little bit. So um, your 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 challenge, Jackie, of Jack saying I can't draw, not even doodle, right? So we're going to change that for you, hopefully, Jack. So uh, you can do a line, Jack, and you can do a square and a circle. So stop it. <laughs> you can do yeah. it. Yeah, Jack, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Jack's coming on the show a little bit later, so he can have his own yeah, back to I'll us, have so. words. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Paul Winfield says hieroglyphics have stood the test of time. Oh, glad you said that because you're so right. This is one of the oldest um, human activities. Uh, the oldest cave drawings, they, they think they found even older, but 64,000 years ago, people were drawing in caves key messages uh, like where the best hunting was and things like that. So it's an old 
art. There we go. There we go. Yeah, brilliant. Um, Graham Rose says, uh, agree, Jackie, unfolding the napkin and the back of a napkin are excellent resources. Yeah, yeah I think totally. our very first meeting, Jackie, I think we were doodling on a napkin, I'm pretty sure. Right. Okay, so um, you've got a second question for us, uh, Jackie, to help us engage. Okay, so um, when and how could you bring graphic facilitation or drawings into your workplace? Okay, so when and how can you bring... Um, yeah, okay, so that's the question. When and how... Was it again, Jackie? Say that again, please. Would you bring drawing into your workplace? So I'm thinking of engaging groups, um, workshops, uh, communicating. So when have you seen it? Okay, uh, have you got any gotcha. ideas on how you could do it? Okay. I've got some, so I can share some ideas with Brilliant. you. Brilliant. Okay, so that kicks us off. Um, Birdin will put that in the, in the chat uh, very shortly. So question for you now, Jackie, you know, um, what is graphic facilitation and why should we pay attention to this and why should we even care about it, Jackie? Take it away mm -hmm. for us. Okay, so <clears throat> graphic facilitation is used um, as an umbrella term yep. uh, and unfortunately it's a sort of profession that has lots of different titles to it. So you might have heard graphic recorder, visual scribe, artist, corporate artist. It's got all sorts of different words. Yeah. I like graphic facilitation because mm. the word facilitate means to make easy. Um, and graphic facilitation, and people like me who do it, um, hold the space of important conversations. Ooh, I like that. So we are the, um, the scribe, we hear what is said, we synthesize what is said and we draw it, usually large scale. So when I'm working in organizations or at conferences, uh, my paper might be three meters wide by one meter high, loads of colors, and I stand there and I, <laughs> my knees are wobbling and I listen to what's being said <laughs> and I draw out the conversation. Um, now, that becomes an artifact that can be reproduced, displayed and tell the story of the content. So. Graphic facilitation, rich pictures, it's a way of capturing really key important messages um, and engaging people in them. And what happens when that's taking place, and some of you will have seen this, uh, maybe in your, your organisations or at conferences, <clears throat> the audience own it. Because when they say something and they suddenly see that it's being captured, yep. they can then really relax and think, oh, I've been listened to. My key point has been captured. So I can just let that go. Then their mind empties a little bit and new thoughts and ideas can come forward. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, in workshop scenarios, uh, like you know, the rules of brainstorming, no idea is a silly idea and keep going, going, going. Because once you've got the obvious ones out, the less obvious ones come forward into the conscious brain. The same thing is happening here. If you've been listened to and acknowledged and your, uh, your point is represented, fresh thinking comes. Oh, and the that. visual is a real spur and an a intrigue that kind of piques further interest and new ideas. It's it's such fun. It's fun to do, uh, if not a little nerve wracking. But it's <laughs> really fun to be part of a group, particularly if you can pick up the pen yourself or your post its with little doodles or, or points are captured. So it, it's a it brings out uh, collective intelligence and collaboration and um, helps with diverse thinking as well. So yeah, it's great. I'm just writing that down. So collaboration, diversity and cohesion are some of the important outcomes yes. Yes. of facilitating um, drawing work in a group discussion. Yes. I, I love that idea. And it helps people to re-engage with it in a different way. They're integrating both left and right brains. Um, and they're feeling more involved, I'm hearing, Jackie, mm -hmm. as you're facilitating what I, Yeah, this. and what I really like is when using it to facilitate a group. Yeah. Uh, so it could be um, we're using it to facilitate um, a team strategy or a project launch or a uh, transformation change, something like that. I love to have people standing around this massive drawing board. Yeah. Um, and I love it. I love to just say, look, you have a go and you step forward and you just draw out or what it is that you're thinking of um, and then taking all those drawings and all those um, 
words and bullet points and reworking them to some sort of rich picture for the organisation once it's all been uh, yeah. agreed. Yeah. It's, it's a lovely way of um, remembering what you've decided I and getting agree. out. I love that rich picture thing. I use that a lot in my... We're very mm. similar, Jackie, because I, I do a lot of visual stuff as well, which I'll come on to later. Jackie, just to give you a break... Um, Birdin, take us through what's going on. There's huge amounts going on in the chat, so catch us up, Birdin. Uh, Graham said, during a PowerPoint live is extremely impactful. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Thomas said, I feel like Mandarin lettering has similarities to doodly. Agreed. Absolutely. And as I said, you can do the most beautiful lettering and it will, people will fall in love with it and have an emotional response to it, just like a drawing. So they will remember the key points that you're making. Yeah. So there's, yeah, there's even art in, in writing, right? Oh, okay. You're on it, Thomas King. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Thomas. Carry on. Laurie Lady. said, I've, I've used it pretty extensively during process improvement and change yeah. management events it's Beautiful. one of the key skills in learn six, six. Uh, absolutely uh, yes there we go yes. laurie's on it as well yeah completely agree there's thumbs up from us on that one jack said for training customer and staff and or simplifying your services so it is absolutely wonderful to do the customer journey uh, so that was the very first piece i did but well before i even knew graphic recording was a thing so was in 1999 i drew out a customer journey for an organization <laughs> full of helicopters and <laughs> buses and things like that um yeah. and uh, it wasn't till years later i realized it was a thing um a thing. so yes um, and actually, while we're at, while we're here, because uh, you've said that uh, the, the Six Sigma, um, here's a, another wonderful book called um, Business Model Generation. Oh, I've got that book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. isn't it fantastic? Isn't it? So for those of you who are thinking, oh, you might like to have a go, but you don't know uh, where to start, there's some excellent templates and ideas in there that will get you going. Do you know what? We're live, right? And the phone has just gone off. How can I'm so you... glad it's not me. <laughs> It'll disappear in a minute. My gosh, look at that. We'll have to cut that out of the podcast. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, dear. Just bear with me one second. I'll just get rid of that. One sec. Birdie, just take us through the comments. Yeah, I will take us through. Um... Sarah said, good morning, folks, joining you from North Tenerife today. Welcome, Sarah. Hi. Uh, Cecile said, to answer your second question, working with children, drawings are used for psychological guidance. As a student, I love a good mind map, colors coded. And this is something I've seen during my university years. It's much easier to draw something out and making the connection between everything and learning like that instead of just having a bunch of theory and words put in front of you. Yeah, and I, I, you're so right. And uh, th the therapeutic area, Area and power of drawing it is it's not one I'm qualified in uh, but I can tell you about a project I'm involved in now which is so heartfelt and um, mm. moving uh, is uh, what does peace building mean to you and it's a global project it's a research project uh, and people from all over the world dial in uh, and they tell us the story of what peace building on the ground would mean to them so wow. obviously the, uh, it's very powerful and very pertinent right now. And they draw their answer and then they tell us their story associated to their drawing. And um, it's a, I just facilitate it. I don't do any drawing. I just give them top tips on how to get something out of their minds and into a drawing. It's so moving. Um, and uh, you can maybe say some stuff you couldn't easily stay. It warms you, say, it warms you up to, to going really quite deep. Wow. Yeah, sorry about that. I can't believe it. Live and the telephone rings. We literally we were really just talking about that <laughs> before we went live. Um, just to let you know, um, Jack, you're, you're in our green room, so we'll just keep you there for a moment for the interlude. But um, so just stay where you are. Yeah, interesting stuff, isn't it? How far did we get with the comments, Birdine? Uh, we are at Cecile's uh, okay. uh, response. So we have Maria Jeffers. Um, just going to catch up on those. I work to help people develop their mental toughness 
One area of mental toughness is the ability to focus those with higher levels of mental toughness, focus better. Doodling sounds like an example of a practical way to improve attention, control, or focus. Yeah, spot yes. on. You've been paying attention, Maria. That's great. Yeah. And morning two to Sarah Hughes. I don't know whether you um, mentioned this earlier. When yes, just... I did. <laughs> <laughs> She's a digital nomad at the moment. The yeah, big <laughs> shout out for Sarah. So, uh, yeah, well done, Sarah. Yeah, we're going to come back to Sarah. We're going to do a Leaders Live with Sarah talking about digital nomading at some point. So, uh, yeah, all the way from Tenerife. So thanks for that, uh, Sarah. Carry on, <laughs> Birdie. Uh, Halo said doodling brings your audience together, yeah. visual and auditive listeners. Yeah. Yeah, and I hope you folks back home are doodling away as well. So uh, there we go. Yeah, Birdie? Uh, Cecile said, I found colors, codification in project plan or creative writing help also. Yeah. Um, well, Jonas responded to you, Sarah. He's just said that it sounds terrible. Hope you can find a way to cope. Good to see you. <laughs> That's it, right. Okay. Tongue in cheek, I know. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Graham said, I attended a Lego series play workshop and graphic facilitation ticks a lot of the same box. Oh, oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. Lego. Look, at, I've got Lego down here. Look, this R2-D2's <laughs> Lego. There's a space rocket over there you can't quite see at the moment. So, uh, yeah, I've got Batman mobiles, all sorts of things. So, uh, brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is, is there a noise? Can you hear a noise? Yes, and yeah, a lot. I'm just going to sort that out, right? <laughs> um, Jackie, just just want to sort that weird noise out. So, you know, how could graphic drawings and illustrations underpin our individual and business performance, Jackie? Yeah. Take it away yeah. for us while I sort that out. No, that, that's a great question. So, uh, if we take it down to basics, in order for people to do well, they need to have absolute clarity on what it is they're supposed to be doing. Um, and uh, not only what they're supposed to be doing, but how they're supposed to be doing it. Um, and I don't know about you, if you've worked in large organizations where there's change projects or the vision, mission and strategy and say, and you all the values and you say, OK, what are the values of your organization? Well, I don't know. They're up on the wall somewhere, but, you know, I've never really engaged with them. OK, what are your strategic imperatives? Um, or is it something about growth? But I can't really quite remember. So when you are able to um, tell stories using the visuals that represent these key corporate messages, um, or even better, you built the visuals with the, the, the leaders of the organization, then um, you really are going to increase engagement um, and yeah. um, motivation and ownership around where the organization is going. So they, these rich pictures that come out of conversations like that are incredibly powerful. If you're a sole trader and you know, you, you're not, uh, you can't run to bringing in graphic facilitators to produce these beautiful works of art for you, um, then you, I'm just, I'm plugging these books just because they've meant so much to me. There is a book called Visual Leaders by Dave Civit. Again, I will put that out there um, so that you know my book recommendations. So as a, as a leader of yourself or a very small team, there are lots of tools and techniques um, that will help you lay out your offering, yeah. uh, lay out your market, marketing strategy, uh, your customer journey, your product strategy. So there's lots of ways and templates uh, that will enable you to think more holistically about the offerings that you're making. So for an example, I pivoted my business um, recently. Well, I say recently, probably about 18 months ago. And uh, I did myself a one and a half meter by one meter journey drawing of started with the end in mind. What do I want my work life to be like? Uh, what do I love doing and where am I now and what's going to get me to there? Yeah. And I just drew it and uh, that sat on my wall for quite a while. And it's lovely just to look up and see all those colours and all those intentions and keep them really live for me. That reminds me of vision boards, Jackie. That sounds like there's a connection there somewhere. There really is. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Really interesting. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned about corporate projects and change projects and Laurie's mentioned that as well yes. uh, in the chat. You know, that was one of the things that I, I 
draw rich pictures to help people land their stories because what what do they say about a picture it tells a thousand words right you know yes absolutely and i do remember uh your storytelling. So uh, you're more than you think you are. Your book, ah, Andrew, is yeah. full of drawings. Yeah. And you know, why? Why did you do that? Yeah, because it was easy to um, to draw a complex subject out and make it just so you could see it in one go. There's a simple example of one. I don't know how well you can see that. It doesn't there. come that well, does it? It doesn't but, come yeah. that well, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I doodled all the way through <laughs> my book, You Are More Than You Think. Even the front cover's my doodle. So uh, mm. so there we go. And that got published in that way. So I was really pleased mm. with that. And, mm. you know, complex subjects can be made so much easier to understand when you just see it in graphic and, form. And, and it's interesting because um, mm. your drawings and... Uh, are very simple and engaging and sometimes in work I mean we're overwhelmed with beautiful visuals all our powerpoints our clip art and things like that they are lovely but they become corporate wallpaper yeah. you've kind of seen it all before mm. whereas a, a hand-drawn drawing there's something uh, there's something charming about them something engaging um, it's somebody's mark making and needs to be respected because it is that. Uh, and we just find ourselves, I, I bet you'd be more drawn to um, something drawn by hand, even shown on PowerPoint, but it's drawn by hand uh, versus, you know, a beautiful piece of clip art. Um, there's just something more simple and engaging about it. Yeah, all that thing about inclusion and neurodiversity, you know, even yes. learning difficulties and children, everybody can join in on this sort of stuff, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Brilliant, I really like that. Jackie, we're going to give you a break for a moment and we're going to come okay. to, um, we're just going to have a quick interlude and we're going to introduce um, Jack into the room. This is a get to know you in five slots. Uh, we're just going to do a quick five minutes on this. Um, so this is the half time piece um, and we have a quick intermission, five minute break for, for Jackie and um, the get to know you slide is that we're building community here on Leaders Live and our motto is I to the power of we. So in this slot is where we briefly feature a regular attendee on the show so we can get to know we can get to know each other a little bit more and each week that kind of builds up. So it's all experimental, folks. We're still trying to figure it out. So we're not sure if we've got it right yet. So I'm just going to bring... Um, uh, I'm just going to bring Jack into the room. Hopefully, I've got him here. Let's just see where he is. Uh, get to know is this the one? And there he is. Hi, how are you doing, Jack? Good morning. You all right? Yeah, great to see you. So we're just doing uh, this quick five-minute slot for you. So this is Jack Wright, folks. He's been on the show for ages. So uh, you can now pour a face to a name. And we've just been talking about getting rid of names and, and having visual representations. Here is a real representation of Jack. <sighs> hey, is oh, that well your done, Jack. this morning? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd prove the concept. <laughs> no, I'm happy with that. Brilliant. So for those of you on podcast, Jack has just risen to the challenge. He's drawn a circle, a square and a line just so that Jackie can can uh, can, can applaud him. Brilliant. Uh, so, look, Jack, this is a, a chance for you just to kind of say a little bit about yourself. You know, um, What is it that you do? Tell us a bit about your work, your company, you know, work-wise, Jack, what you're passionate about, what lights your fire, Tell us a little bit about you and your business. Yeah, so um, we're, I'm a family, I run, work for my family run business called yep. Your DMS, uh, based in Swindon in the UK, mm -hmm. right next borderline, the lovely Cotswolds, if anyone's been there. Yeah, we have. Um, so be have yeah. yeah, beautiful yeah. part of the world. Um, and we help with all kinds of organizations to improve the way they work using technology. So we're talking about customer journey, what Jackie was. Um, great lives, by the way, Jackie. I'm learning a lot because we're looking at all these types of things. Um, but basically from where, wherever, when an invoice, whether, whether that be an invoice coming in from a processing perspective to the point where it needs to be paid um, or a simple holiday form creation uh, and an approval process that happens on a computer. Um, if there's documents, data and people involved, we can help. Um, and we've obviously got plenty of case studies up and down the country that we deal with plenty of different businesses um, that, that can back that up on our website. Me personally, I'm very passionate about mental health um, and I'm a massive advocate of that. I've recently been on a mental health responder course. Um, well done. I, in my private time, I, I yeah, it was really, really useful. Um, and I, in my private time, I coach two football teams and under 14s and an under 10. So I'm helping those wow. uh, kids 
grow into the world with using sport as well. But also in my working at your DMS, it really helps with, with I think, I believe with technology really can help people's mental health. Because how many times do people walk into work and want to smash their computer across the, across, across the room? <laughs> it's not working. I've never felt that. <laughs> not more than I mean, once a day. I, yeah. I, I was going to say, I thought today you were going to throw something across oh, the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the phone is now is now smashed to pieces under my yeah. foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think you held it together, but I, I could see it slightly in your eyes. Um, <laughs> That's like, what's going on? Yeah. yeah, but I think I think from that perspective, with tech, with with the right tech, the technology yeah. partner, uh, as as we are going on that journey with a business, because it can be quite daunting. You have different age groups in terms of business. You've got someone. I mean, I'm thirty, and you've got me going. And I'm kind of in that middle of generation. I mean, my daughter, she's two. She can use a phone already. She's yeah, quite, quite exactly. Quite... They just figure it out, right, Jack? And 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 not, no one really wants to be told, oh, you should be using tech or you should be. It's, it's about that. It's about that explanation. And we are looking at things, doing things with the doodle um, explanation, explainer videos. And there you go. So actually right. business process comes alive when you doodle it so, and draw it yeah, through. Definitely. Thanks, yeah, Jack. Definitely. There's a lot of love in the room for you, Jack. So we'll we'll come to so people saying hello and howdy and uh, control alt delete some comments <laughs> for you. <laughs> Absolutely. So Absolutely. quick one for you, Jack. Can you describe yourself in three words? Yes, I would say I'm reliable, funny and caring. There you go. Yeah, that comes across loud and clear. I love that. Funny and caring. Brilliant. Absolutely great. If you could have one superpower, Jack. What would it be? Oh, Do you know, this has got to be the hardest question, but for, 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 for a few reasons and not, not the morbid reasons, I would time travel. And the reason why I time travel is to see people that I didn't get an opportunity to see um, before I was born, essentially. And I wanted nice. to experience and also experience the time where things were, were, were great, I guess. And there's, obviously there's great, there's, there's times now that are great, but also back in the day, I, I'd like to experience that. So yeah, probably time travel. Brilliant. So travel back in time, but yeah. back to the future or back to the past or whatever. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. So, what is one of the things on your bucket list then, Jack? Mm. Uh, this is well. It's probably going to surprise people, but I want to. I want to drive down Route sixty six with my wife in a Ford oh. Mustang. Nice. That's what I want to do. And actually, I do want to do it in a Ford Mustang. I don't. I don't want to do it in any other car. I don't know why. Brilliant. Ford Mustang. Yeah, I like that idea. Wow. Brilliant. Okay. Favourite food, Jack? Favourite food? Pizza. 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 <laughs> yeah, all day pizza. All Suck day up pizza. pizza. Favourite band? Uh, I'd say Arctic Monkeys. Arctic Monkeys. Ooh, okay. Favourite film? Uh, Snatch. Snatch? Don't know Snatch. Yeah. There's a new one on me. You don't know Snatch? No, I don't Guy know Ritchie. Snatch. Oh, you got to go watch it. It's right, got to cool. go watch that. Yeah, yeah. Probably The Matrix is my favourite film, but... Uh, that's oh, good. that's a good film. Yeah, I, I could have picked several of mine, but there you go. <laughs> Follow your dream, Jack, says, uh, says Graham. Ah, oh, <laughs> brilliant. Fantastic. Yes, nothing but a Mustang will suffice, says Laurie. <laughs> 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 Applause from the token American. There you go. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Okay, so thanks very much, Jack. You know, for being such a sport and having uh, being our second guest on Get to Know You in Five Slot. Hope you enjoyed it. Sorry, it's only a very short period. We're going to say goodbye to you now, Jack. Great to see you, though. Thanks a lot, yeah. Jack. Cheers, Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers for now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Cheers. Okay, so let's get back to um, Jackie. So, yeah, so that's the interlude over. Um, we hope you found that interesting and useful as a bit of just a sidebar and interlude people. And now we're back on the show again with Jackie. And just before we get to Jackie, let's just catch up on some of the more comments that are going on um, or have been going on just so we catch everyone's views and stuff. So I'm just going to bring Birdin back. Birdin, what's going on in the chat before we bring Jackie back in? Okay, I'm just going to go back a bit. So yep. Maria said, my 14-year-old daughter loves her highlighters in school. She's very visual. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, Laurie, I've added all of the links, but it's to Amazon, to all of the books that uh, Jackie has mm -hmm. presented this far. So all it's Amazon links. You can just go and click on them. I've added all of them. Thomas said, it was easy to doodle the ringing phone. I'm learning. <laughs> Brilliant. This is live, baby. Anything can happen. <laughs> yeah, I like that, Thomas. Well said. Yeah, great. Love it. 
Love oh, it. as Estelle said, recently I mean these last three coloring books, mandalas are so called mindfulness coloring. Oh, mm. I love that. Yeah, this yeah. you know, there's so much here as our child childhood gets lost as we grow into adulthood. Sometimes like this is beaten out of us in the in our education system, isn't it? And Jackie's yeah. already hinted a little bit about that. Okay. Oh, here's an interesting one. Alistair Forbes. <laughs> Hi Alistair. <laughs> so that's Jackie's other half. So uh yeah. Business model generation. Yeah, spot on, Alistair. Absolutely spot on. Yeah, we've been talking a little bit about that and we'll come back onto that as well. Birdine. Matthias said, working as a leadership coach for teenagers, I have discovered that creative activities can bring so many joys to those struggling with theoretical filled lectures when they can create things themselves. And I've got something just quickly to add to this because I've watched a, a film the other day or it was just a video, but the teacher had a different way of t teaching the kids and yeah. she used a ball with numbers on it. So the moment you catch the ball, the numbers that your thumbs are on, you need to either multiply or um, t take divide it or whatever the case may be. But the moment you catch the ball, and that class did the best in the whole school because she made mm. it fun and mm. more visual for them. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Anything I'd like else? to pick up on um, yeah, Matthias's yeah, uh, point, actually, uh, about uh, teenagers and, and drawing. We see it everywhere, don't we? We see graffiti everywhere yeah. and making uh teenagers making their mark uh, being seen mark um and uh i don't know if any of you have ever been to barcelona and done the um graffiti tour it's incredible and just to say going back to graphic facilitation and recording things it can be done graffiti style uh that is a style of doing it and um obviously young people are highly likely to respond to that very well get the spray so, cans yeah. out yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah, brilliant. So we'll come back to comments in again a little while. So, um, so Jackie, you know, how can we practically apply drawing skills into our workplaces? You know, get us started here. How do we even get started? Will we get beyond the circle, the square, and the line that, that Jack so eloquently drew a few moments ago? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it depends if you're going if you're preparing. A visual so you've mm -hmm. got all the time in the world right. and if you are then a way to get started is to think what people process adjectives nouns mm. are likely to be needed in this um, visual representation of a message I want to convey and then you can sort of brainstorm all the things that might come up um, and find your way of representing those in a simple drawing. So if I'm doing a, a job, uh, so I'm, I am doing a job soon, actually. <laughs> it's it's a, a nuclear power conference. Cool. I don't know a lot about nuclear power. So before I go, Sounds I glowing. will have a little private brainstorm to myself. Yeah. And I'll be thinking about the people, the process, the adjectives, the nouns, what are likely to come up in that in that. Um, that engagement and so that I can at least turn up with something in my mind yeah. um, really really experienced graphic facilitators don't need to do that but me and you if you want to bring it into preparing to draw uh, you'll need to so that's for pre-preparing if you want to bring drawing in um, to uh, a workshop scenario brainstorming scenario then I would look go back to the business model generation book or uh, Grove. So Grove consultants have incredible maps and things which they do sell. Um, and just go onto the internet and look up visual templates or graphic templates. And there will be so many there that will really help you. Um, and again, just for an audience to just see um, a visual template, even with no drawings, is just an engaging sheet of paper or whiteboard that they can get uh, populated. They like the challenge, they like the task, they like to see yeah. something completed in that way. And talking um, about that, Jackie, can we have a couple yeah. of your examples, do you think? Yeah, sure. Let's sure. just, um, Graham's asked for a couple of examples. Let me just go and yes. see if I can find okay, one here. Pleasure. Here's one. Here's okay. two, in fact. Sorry, okay. I'm a bit small. 
Right. So hard to see, but I am going to produce a paper after this talk, mm. uh, which Andrew will uh, make available to you. So the, the top one is a rich picture that tells the story of an organization's HR strategy. Yeah. And on there is the, an employee life cycle. I mean, you can't see it, but an employee life cycle from joining uh, to developing um, to leaving, really. Um, and uh, that tells the complete story in a visual form. Love that. Beautiful. The one Very below, as well. Yeah. The one below, I just loved this project. Mm. So this has been done for a theatre. Uh, and what a wonderful organisation they are. I'll give them a shout out. Capital Theatres. Um, <laughs> Uh, here in Scotland and basically they have uh, created focus groups of, pe of people living with dementia to say how could we make your theatre experience work for you Lovely. and boy I've learned that you know it's really great not to have mirrors uh, we like blue toilet seats uh, we like <laughs> a certain signing so it, it was a really wonderful piece of work where I turned up to the focus groups listened to what people were saying and then turn that round into something that would represent um, their conversations and what the uh, theatres had committed to doing, which was significant. So actually, I have on my floor here a massive uh, printout of that drawing, which um, will be displayed in the theatre. So I, I'm pretty thrilled with that one. Yeah, I love the lights and the way the lights are underpinning yeah. some of the textual stuff. It's beautiful. Absolutely. I love the metaphors there. Absolutely gorgeous. So that's one example. Let's see if I can find another one. Uh, not that one. Is it this one? Not that one. Where are we? Uh, yeah, here's a couple more. Okay. So um, the one below mm. uh, is actually, I made a comic strip oh, wow. of, of what uh, is actually my daughter and a colleague who worked mm. for Edinburgh, Edinburgh, or worked for Edinburgh and Lothian Green Space. Mm. And basically when everyone else was on furlough, they were out there dancing in the street, keeping people moving, wow. uh, which was amazing. So that's just the story of what they did and what their offerings were during um, lockdown. Gosh, that's brilliant. And there's a picture of you live having created yeah. one, uh, yeah. the one above. Yeah, I love that. I love the kind of the simpleness of it. And um, there's a great graphic illustration of you in the moment having just just drawn yes. that fantastic um, Actually, I, I forgot I forgot this. On my mm. website, uh, so drawn to learn, www.drawntolearn, is um, an okay, explainer w. of what graphic facilitation is. It's a little video you can watch. Uh, that really uh, succinctly tells you, I, I can't remember, about five or seven minutes, exactly what graphic facilitation is. So you might want to have a little peep at that. OK, so that's drawn to learn folks dot co dot UK. So uh, that's where that one is. And it's in the feed now. So listen, we're just marching to um, with oh, time is always against us. There's a there's a, a line from a film. Um, Jackie, just where else do you use your sort of drawing skills in your work with your clients. Tell us a little bit more about that so we can yeah. get you know, even okay. more information. From well, um, like lots of people in my field, uh, mm. obviously our work fell off a cliff when the lockdown oh, happened yes. and there were no group conversations <laughs> going on. Mm. So I pivoted my business then yeah. uh, and I studied to become an accredited visual coach. Mm. So I've done coaching oh, wow. for the last 30 years, but um, I studied with a lady called Christina Merkley uh, mm. and I learned all about and became accredited to use the Shifted coaching system. Um, and I just love this system. So it's it's got seven stages to it. Um, you don't religiously have to work through each of those stages and you can dart about a bit. But each of those stages is underpinned by a lovely visual map. Maybe show the next slide. Sure. Um, so there are numerous maps, um, but I work online with um, my coachee. They will see that map displayed on, on screen and they will see me draw into that map, draw and catch at bullet points, um, the conversation as it unfolds. Yeah, beautiful. And it, I was really worried about working online because mm. as a coach, I, I'm, I'm really into... Um, reading people and looking at blink rates, breathing rates, and you know, how they're holding themselves and really <laughs> working out where they're at. And I was a bit concerned, would we lose that uh, 
that empathetic rapport connection that happens when you coach live. Oh, this just goes deeper. I've been astounded. So because we are both focused on the drawing as it unfolds, I can still see the person as well. When they see, when, when what is what they're saying is captured, they, it's just like a sigh of relief and they can really relax into the session. I'm really honoring everything that they say and their space and their container. And um, it becomes so profound. And this system, uh, Christina's system is actually beautiful. I love it. Um, and I feel that uh, I've got deeper and more powerful um, commitments from my coachees. I mean, they've done things like, um, you know, retire early, give up their job, find, they've made major changes, move. Um, so it, it's been quite profound for me, actually. And it's really invigorated me around coaching again and yeah. bringing together, you know, all those years of drawing experience and coaching experience, bringing the two together has been just wonderful. Fantastic. And the things you can do here, looking at the Shift It system, I'm just taking the visual on the right-hand side of this here. For those of you on podcasts, you know, it's looking at um, your satisfaction interrupted, harvesting your history, investigate your now, focus on your future, trouble at the border, um, you know, ink it, don't just think it, love that. And above all, take action. And that's really yeah. what the coaching Shift It process does by the sounds of it, Jackie. Yes. Very it's, powerful. It, oh, it is. It's beautiful. And it is quite mm. a journey. I mean, it, it takes a, between 12 and 17 hours. I mean, some people might do it faster. So it's quite a few uh, contact points. Or you can do a retreat um, and, uh, you know, spend a couple of days with me and I'll take you through the whole thing. Yeah, or do it in sessions and then the session builds yeah. the right arm with you. So yeah. actually the output of your coaching sessions then become a visual represent. I love that idea. What Absolutely. Idea. So they, they yeah. so they end up, you know, these can be bound into a beautiful book, they can be made mm. into a picture, but they end up with their visual story of, you know, where they've been, what their barriers are and where they want to get to. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, I really love that. Wow. Thank you. Listen, time, time is now uh, marching ahead of us, but um, I just wanted to say that was just so intriguing. I think we need to get Jackie back on the show. We say this every single time. And yeah, just that whole thing about drawing, you know, when I'm coaching uh, in my practice, you know, I, I have a virtual um, vision board or a virtual whiteboard and we draw on that with our imagination and um, I'm doodling at the same time. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I resonate with, with your practices there. That sounds really great, the Shift It process. Mm -hmm. So, Jackie, you know, if you want to find out more from Jackie, tell us tell us a little bit about how people can get hold of you, Jackie. Uh, give us a little bit about your call to action. Yes, yes absolutely. Well, my call to action is, uh, well, first of all, how did your doodles go? So yeah. if it, it, no matter how messy or, uh, uh, you know, kind of, unsophisticated they are Photographs, we'd love to please. see them so how <laughs> yeah how about you pop those up, um, pop them up. call to action uh, would be try out your next online call or <laughs> business meeting try some mind mapping and try some drawing if you are <clears throat> running your own business Try mapping out your services, your vision, your mission, and all the rest of it. Um, try making some sort of representation for that. Yeah. And if uh, what we've spoken about today That's has right. captured your imagination, um, you know, I'd be delighted to talk to you. But um, if you know you want to be self-resourced, here's a wonderful book as well: The Bible, uh, The Graphic Facilitator's Guide, uh, by a lady who taught me to be a graphic facilitator, Brandy Agabek. Um, so uh, again, we can put that out there. Um, we'll that's a great place to start. It's yeah. so simply written, and again, will take you really build your confidence to have a go. Thank you. Yeah, and all those links will be. Um, uh, Jackie's going to produce a PDF later on. We're going to pop it into the comments yeah. feed. It'll also be in the newsletter as well that we're producing um, either this week or next week. So you can get Jackie on jackie.forbes at drawntolearn.co.uk. There's her website, drawntolearn.co.uk. And you can join Jackie's Facebook page on Drawn to Learn, all one word. Is that right, Jackie? 
That's it. Yep. Fantastic. Okay, and we'll put all of those links in the um, in the comments as well as Jackie's LinkedIn profile, her email, website links, and all that lot that's coming into the chat now if it's not there already. So thanks again, Jackie, for enlightening us today. Yeah, we've loved, loved, loved having you on the show. Uh, yeah, this show will also be on podcast too shortly once we've got rid of the phone we'll have to edit that out <laughs> don't know how we're going to do that yet um, but this is live so uh, please join us on our LinkedIn leaders live group to follow on with the conversation we're going to move over there so if you haven't joined that group already it's extraordinary conversations with leaders live so please join that and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well and Birdie will put all the links into the comments field as well so before I get on to what's happening in in a couple of uh, well in next week actually a quick word on what's the purpose and the why with leaders live and it really all starts with the idea that you are more than you think which is the title of my first book actually we've just been talking about earlier on and we're building community of like-minded folks folks that's what we're doing and this is particularly relevant in building back better business and people um, in following the last two years as Jackie's just highlighted as well with the pandemic so our motto here is I to the power of we so Leaders Live is a freely available edutaining expression of this and anyone can join in and take part in our extraordinary conversations which we've had this morning so there's a little bit about us so we're simply spreading the love and uh, we want to bring a spirit of freedom of joy and fun and feel good factor in our working lives. I think that's really important for today's world. And um, if you want to know a little bit about me professionally, I speak and host events. I facilitate top teams and strategy processes using rich pictures, folks. Um, so yeah, just as Jackie's been talking about as well, uh, I develop high performance teams and I'm a fully qualified executive coach. So you can grab me for executive coaching. And also if you are a, a CEO of a SME business, a small, a small to medium business. Then I co-founded a, a thing called Joy, uh, Inspired CEOs, which is to help in CEOs play a bigger game. So um, yeah, if if you're one of those, please contact me, and uh, I can tell you more about Inspired CEOs. So that's a little bit about me. So the goose for next week, folks. Let's just get the goose for next week. Um, next week's show on Tuesday, the third of May at eight forty-five. UK time, AM, I'll be hanging out with Director of Niche Consultancy, Effective 8 Limited and Sales Expert, Cheryl Harding, and we'll be chatting about sales strategy for the real world. Oh, oh, so be there or be square, folks. So that's a bit of a rap, rap, rap from us, folks. So um, it's been great hanging out with you today. Um, with all you folks, we'll turn the volume down a bit on that, so... Um, so yeah, you can bop out to this music as we are finishing the show today. I had a great time with with Jackie Forbes. You'll be clearing up this this um, confetti for ages. It's pouring down the screen, gold and silver confetti. Podcast will be out too shortly. And in the meantime, it's a wrap, 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 folks, from us. So from Jackie, Birdine, and me, wish you a great week ahead. And you can bop out to intro music, as I said. That's all for now, folks. See you again next week. We'll see you again. Cheers for now. Tarara bit. Thank Bye. you very much. Bye-bye.